650 tonnes. Harvesting only by hand is one of many ways the Goolwa Pippi Company maintains the highest level of sustainability. It's hard work that Imogen and I are getting a close-up look at. We're here on the beach. Have you ever seen any of this sort of stuff before? I haven't, actually, <laughs> no. Do you use pippies at Africola? We do use pippies, yeah. We have it all year round on yeah. our menu. So you've had a big night. Last night <laughs> was the Adelaide Advertiser. Award, restaurant of, yeah. Oh, and you guys won Restaurant of the Year. Yeah, we did. How amazing. amazing. Yeah. That's <laughs> fantastic. Pretty We're pretty happy with it. I'm feeling it today, but actually a pretty good setting to... So now you know how much dedication to her duties Imogen, or Moto of Friends, has shown just by being here this morning. And we're going to put it to double work as the morning moves on. For now, she and I can relax a little as we study the hand gathering techniques that will produce about 600 kilos of pippies from this day's work. The only mechanical device on the beach is a machine to sort the pippies. The resulting quick return of undersized pippies to the surf is another important step in the sustainability of this fishery, as Goolwa Pippi Company Operations Manager Alastair Scott Young explains. These rollers are on a bit of a taper. Yep. Small gap here, big gap here. The small ones pull through the small gap. The bigger ones travel further down until they reach the gap and they drop in. On the beach, we just separate them into what we keep and what we put back in the water for next year. OK, awesome. So the little ones go back? Yep. And they're all at different stages of development. OK. So something that might be at this time, that size might be a big stomper in February. And do you know how long these things live? Well, we think three to five years. OK. How so, do they reproduce? So they spawn, spat goes out into the current, yep. things are fertilised, it travels around as larvae, and it recruits itself onto the beach in small proportions. Yep. And, that's, and then it, it grows itself out. It's not that you can move further out and catch more. You've actually got to fish along this one strip. So there'll be a front edge for this patch and a back edge for this patch. You can see the boys right now, like the water's just pushed in. But the key, as much as possible... They go hard here, look at that. <laughs> we braid them off, put the undersize back in the water. Yep. The product that we keep goes into a bag and gets a unique tag. All that's logged and registered as official paperwork for fisheries. OK. So when we leave this beach, we have paperwork which tells fisheries exactly what we've got, bought on what license. Okay, so yeah, every, everything that leaves this beach is identified as being as being the property of uh, this particular crew on these particular licenses. Right. Okay. Roughly speaking, we fish about 60 k's from the Murray Mouth South. Yep. Okay, and that and that is approved for human consumption. Right. Okay. You tend tend to have almost like fishing spots. This is a hot spot here come back here time and time again, the, the pippies all sort of congregate here. Yeah, or probably you know, counter that. We, we fish this to a point, we just keep an eye on how it's looking, and we probably rest it for a couple of months, Yep. and then we'll move on to another spot. Because we are reasonably close to home here, it's really important to keep our travel time down. So if we can not travel far, we can get it nice and early like this. If we can be back in the shed, product in the tank, on an aircraft tomorrow, nice and good condition. The story of how these pippies get from here to seafood markets around Australia and overseas is coming up. And a delicious pippy.